What's up, everybody? Um, this is what I call like a double review or the Juice Crew tribute because I'm gonna be reviewing two Juice Crew related albums. Um, Biz Marquis going off, and Big Daddy Kane looks like a job for. Him. Before I start, um, I want to wish all my people in the North Carolina area. Hope you guys are doing well wherever you guys located. Being safe from Hurricane Florence. I mean, it's pretty straight over here. Like, it was drizzling earlier, but it's not really going to do that much around here, basically. So, but yeah, everybody who's affected by it, you got to keep safe and shit, basically. Alright, so, yeah, so, we, if you guys, um, thank you so much for watching the Daddy's Home review, by the way, of me and Steven, aka Immobility One, did a couple days ago and shit. Um, yeah, and just to let you guys know, both of these albums are out of print. This was re-released, I believe, back in 2006 for Traffic, but it got, I think, got out of print quickly. You know how Traffic goes. So, alright, so, Bismarck Key, Bismarck Key. For those of you who don't know who Bismarck Key is, he is a member of the Juice Crew, um, you know, with Big Daddy Kane, Marley Mar, Roxanne Shante, MC Shan, you guys should know. Um, he is an MC, I believe he's from Long Island. He's from Long Island and shit like that. He got his, he was mostly in the early 80s, mostly like in the battle rap scene, basically, and participated in like DJing parties and shit. And in 1984, he met, um, Big Daddy Kane and shit, and... Him and Kane, they were like very close friends, even to this day and shit, basically. And so that's how he got affiliated with Marty Maul. And Marty Maul kind of appointed Biz Marquis to be his beatboxer for Roxanne Shante because at that time, Roxanne Shante had just dropped the Roxanne's Revenge disc track that aimed at UTFO. Um, in case you guys don't know UTFO, they dropped that song Roxanne, Roxanne. Um, very dope, very dope song, very dope hip hop group and shit like that. I kind of recall that group like a precursor to like Houdini and shit like that, but that's another story for a different day. And so in 1986, he made his first appearance on a wax on like this Juice Cruise single, um, the Death Fresh Crew. And also that same year, he dropped the, um, the Inhuman Orchestra EP. Which that's had the original version of Make the Music with Your Mouth. You guys should know that song. That's a hip hop classic right there. And fast forward to 87, you know, he was making guest appearances on people's albums. Most notably, um, he was guesting on Big Daddy Kane, so it's like just rhyming with Biz on the Long Live the Kane album, which I reviewed a couple of months ago. Classic, hip hop classic right there. And he dropped the next single, Nobody Beats the Biz. Another dope hip-hop classic, which I'll get into. And so, 1988, he dropped this album right here, Going Off. Um, <clears throat> Marty Maul produced this whole album. Um, and you had some background vocals from TJ Swan. And let me just say this. Before there was Nate Dogg, there was TJ Swan, basically. Because TJ Swan was like the singer of like the Juice School. He was singing on like a lot of Big Daddy Kane, um, Biz Marquee albums and shit like that. If I'm not mistaken, I think he did some shit on some Cool G rap albums, but I could be wrong on that. But yeah, very dope singer and shit. I don't, I don't know what ever happened to TJ Swan. I don't know, but yeah, singles albums known for it. It came up with like um, the main singles where. Vapors, Nobody Beats the Biz, and I would say Make the Music with Your Mouth and Pickin' Pickin' Boogers. Those are like the main singles. Because according to Wikipedia, they said like all the songs were singles basically, but I'm just saying the main single people, the album, the songs the album was known for basically. Alright, um, this is the cover of the album. You know, call me crazy, but I've just noticed that that's Bismarcky on the side right there. 
and that's just his face like with animated and shit. I literally just noticed that because I thought he was doing the tribute to the Wizard of Oz. I thought that shit right there was at the Yellow Brick Road or some bullshit. I don't know. But yeah. And in the back here, Cool V. For those who don't know what Cool V is, that's his cousin right there. Um, he will play an instrument instrumental part in Biz Marquis like future releases because after this release, Biz Marquis and Cool V pretty much produced all of their own albums and shit. And yeah, this was the only album in his discography that was fully produced by Marley Mall, basically, which yeah, because let me just say, Bismarck, he's a very slept on producer. Him and Cool V. Like, my favorite album besides this is, but no, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna save that for after this review. Let me save that because I'm talking to you right but Yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Let me show you what's inside. Let me see what it's By the way, yeah, this is kind of broken up and shit. And there's actually a story about how I got this album and shit, basically. Um, so I recently got this album um, not too long ago. Um, about I would say about almost a month ago, I was checking out some albums. You know, I was about to leave, and I, in the side of my eye, I, I turned around and I saw Biz Marquee. So I was like, "Oh shit!" So I was like, "I was wondering. I thought it was like a single. I was wondering what I thought it was a single. Then it turned out it was the Going Off album, and it only cost me a dollar." And I was literally gonna buy that album online for about ten bucks, the vinyl version and shit like that. But I literally, sorry about that. Because I literally bought the OG version for a dollar. So that right there was a good ass trade, basically. Um, because usually the OG version of this album goes for a like hell of money. As with like a lot of Coach Killer. As with like a lot of Coach Killer releases. Especially in like the 80s and shit. Like, for example, I was on YouTube. I mean, excuse me, I was on Amazon and I saw a copy of. MC Shan's Down by Law, his first album for $195 and shit. I was like, damn. And shit like that. So, and that same day, I actually met an intern from Cold the Records. And he was telling me, like, a lot of stories about, you know, Kane and Marty Ball and Vince Marquis and shit like that. So, not only did I get this album, but I met, like, an intern from Cold Chillin. So, that was a great day for me. Other than that, sorry for wasting too much time because we do have two albums to review. Um, we, this album has ten songs. You guys should know what I'm about to do. All right. Track number one, "Picking Boogers." Um, dope, 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 funny ass song. I love that song. That has a very nice beat to it. Um, fuck, that song was basically about. It's based on a kid that he, he knew. That was known for like picking boogers and shit like that. So, yeah. But like the beat alone is so fly and shit like that. So fresh. Um, track number two, the Albi Square Mall. Um, Albi Square Mall, from what I looked up, was like a famous mall in Brooklyn and shit like that. And he was just paying homage to that mall. Very dope, very dope song. Um, of course, you hear TJ Swan on the vocals and yeah, shit like that. And also, I forgot to mention, like, Biz Marquee does his fair shit of beatboxing throughout this whole album and shit, so, yeah. Track number three, Biz is going off. Um, that song was alright. Then you have a turn of the Biz dance. Again, an okay song. And then it ends with the Vapors, the side A. This is a hip-hop classic right here, Vapors. Um, probably, maybe, arguably... One of my favorite songs off this album, tied with another song. What I got from that song, it tells like four individual stories of people in his Juice Crew, how they were 
it tells them how people weren't really believing in them at first or they got like a shortcomings in life. But then once they become successful, the people become jealous and they want some of that success. But in business, business Marky's eyes, it's called they caught the vapors and shit. Cause I believe he talks about Bit Molly Mall, Cool V, TJ Swan, and Big Daddy Kane and shit like that. Very dope song. And he even I was reading the book, um, Check the Technique Volume One. Very dope book. Um, make sure y'all guys cop volume one and volume two. And okay. And he was saying that he based this song off like the Twilight Zone, you know. You know the TV show back in like TV show that ran for like fifty nine to sixty four and shit like that. So, cause you know how Rod Stern would be like, picture this: you're in this truck crossroads. Like he has that spooky narration, but he did it in a hip hop twist. So I thought that was pretty interesting and shit. Then you have make the music with your mouth, biz. Um. Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing about vapors. According to Bismarck Key, he even said that Vapors has like a cult following in the West Coast. And it's very evident because Snoop Dogg actually sampled, I mean, he covered Vapors off the mediocre Dogfather album and shit like that. But look at my review on that album. Other than that, um, yeah, make the music with your mouth biz. Um, very dope song. That was, um, this is actually the re the remix, kind of, um, for this album. And it's probably my favorite use of that sample. I think that, like, Isaac Hayes sample. Because I've heard that sample being used plenty of times in hip-hop. And people have kind of used it the same way and shit like that. But... With Marty Maul, he kind of made that shit sound sinister in a way and shit like that. I don't know how to really explain it, but you guys have to listen to it and you be the judge of that. But yeah. Um, yeah. Then we have the Best Dance Part 1. Eh, could have done without that. Then we have Nobody Beats the Biz, which in my opinion is my favorite song off this album. It's probably one of like Biz Marquis' most signature songs and shit like that. Um, the Molly Mall remix of this song. Oh my god! Like, I loved how both both of these the songs, the remix and the sample, flipped that Steve Miller band sample and shit like that. Very dope. And the last two songs, like this is for the radio and Cool V's Trip to Scratching. Um, pretty solid tracks, you know. This is for the radio self-explanatory. It's like a commercial track. And yeah. Alright. My opinion. This is a classic album. In my opinion. I don't care what nobody says. The reason why I say because. I feel like some of Molly Mall's best production. Was on this album. Like. It definitely had that basement. Dirty feel to it. And just the way the album was mixed and shit like that, it very it added on something to the album and shit like that. Um, this Marquis definitely a very entertaining rapper and shit. And like I mentioned before, um, it's crazy how the Juice Crew, each member had their own individual personality, like and shit like that. K was a smooth one. Cool G was the rough one. Marquis was the excuse me, that was from my phone. Marquis was the funny one. Um, Intelligent Hoodlum was the revolutionary one. Roxanne Chante was the one you like. You guys get what I'm saying and shit like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, very dope album. Um, this album, in my opinion, has like a special place when it comes to, like the golden age of hip hop. Like, just the feel-good music that was coming out from the Juice Crew at that time. Um, yeah. And, like I said before, this is this album, and I Need a Haircut are my favorite albums from Biz Marquee. The, the jury is still out whether I'll do I Need a Haircut now or wait till I get a, a, a copy of the Diabolical Biz Marquee. Oh, excuse me. The Biz, Mar the Biz Never Sleeps. 
and shit like that. Because I really want to review I Need a Haircut. So I'll probably review that sometime before the year ends. Because The Biz Never Sleeps, that was a good album. Don't get me wrong. But he was kind of going a little bit commercial in some parts from when I, when I first time I listened to it. But any album besides Weekend Warrior is a winner for me. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah. And another thing, too, I forgot to mention. Big Daddy Kane wrote the first half of this whole album. Excuse me. And this is another evidence, like, he was, like, his pen game was on point that time and shit like that, like, very dope. Um, I have to really research and see if he goes through anything for The Biz Never Sleeps. He probably did, but, yeah. Very good album. If you can find this album, must have in your collection. Like I said before, this album's out of print, so, Biz Marquee going off, and would you excuse me, I'm about to, um... Change gears right quick. We gotta get to Alright. Shout out to Mike Sears. Shout out to my boy Steven. This one's for y'all. The next hip hop album I'm about to do a review on is Big Daddy Kane's fifth studio album looks like a job for. I've waited a long time to review this album, a very long time. Because this is the album where I felt like he entered what I suppose is like his second era and second era or second transition in his career and shit like that. Well, maybe scratch that. His third transition, because chronologically, you know, the weak taste of chocolate, um, kind of had something to do with that Barry White era. But you guys should know Big Daddy Kane. Um, I review every album besides, of course, this one and Veterans Day. So yeah, okay, so. Singles album is known for are How You Got a Record Deal and Very Special. Producers include Trackmasters, DJ Clash, Robert Brown, Easy Mo B, Ironically Cool V, Large Professor, Mr. C, and Spark Boogie. Okay, interesting. All right. Okay, so after the release of Prince of Darkness, you know, she kind of stepped back from rapping a little bit. And he got into acting and shit. And he appeared on Mario Van Peebles, um, Posse, um, that Western, and he appeared on Robert Towns' The Media Man and shit. And, like I mentioned before, um, Molly Maul had left Cold Chillin two years prior. She still had one more album left in his contract, and so she basically wanted to leave this album with the bank, because he was disappointed. At that time, Prince of Darkness did not really do too good. Which is crazy because I re recently listened to the album and it's not as bad as people make it out to be. It's actually, it's better than Taste of Chocolate. And surprisingly, it's better than Veterans Day. Stay tuned on that. Alright, so the album cover right here, actually not a bad album cover, you know. Kind of like, I like this shit right here, you know, he has a hoodie and shit, basically going back to his roots and shit. 
Cause that's what this album basically is. That's what the album is known for by a lot of people. He went back to his roots with this album. Oh, I forgot to mention. Also, in between '91 and '92, he appeared on guest appearances on the Juice soundtrack, where he did like the Enough Respect song, which is one of my favorite bass, Big Daddy Kane songs, probably my top five. Just the way he was rapping on that beat, and part of me wished that out that song was on the Prince of Darkness album, but again, the Juice soundtrack is a soundtrack that stands alone. It can stand alone as a hip hop album by itself. So. Um, also, what else, what else? He appeared on Kooji Rap and DJ Poe, Live and Let Die. What was the song? What was the song? Number one with the bullet, yes. Which is, again, another dope song from a classic album. That's actually one of my favorite reviews I've done back in 2016, in case you guys want to go check that out. And yeah, you'll be surprised. I was rocking the Gumby at that time. So yeah. Other than that, yeah. Let me let me stop talking. So yeah, this is the album right here. So yeah, this is the album credits and shit like that. Yeah, mind you, this is the first time I'm actually opening the booklet. So and I got this from. I believe I got this from Amazon. Yeah, this is his crew right here. Thing with like Lil Daddy Shane. I think um, Mr. C. Yeah. All right. So, fourteen songs and shit like that. You guys should know what I'm about to do. Track number one looks like a job for it. Um, I love this song. Love the way this album started off. You guys be sleeping on the track masters. Niggas always say, oh, the track masters, they don't, they don't, um, uh, produce grimy shit. Listen to this shit between, like, I would say 90, 91 to maybe 94. That's some of the grimiest beats in the East Coast right there, basically. So yeah, very dope song. Love that song. Track number two, How You Get a Record Deal. In my opinion, it's my favorite song off this album. Um, you guys should know this song is basically about um these rappers that you question how they got famous, how they got a record deal. Um, you know he definitely has some dope lines and shit. Give me one second. And that beat alone is is actually playing in the background too. That beat alone is so New York. The track masters produced this one as well. And shit like that. Um he had he had some lines like You knock out the bush like a presidential campaign, but you think that licking toes makes me weak. You better treat me, you better treat me like Freddy Krueger don't sleep. I write rhymes ready to rip and rock real rough rhymes. Like Um he also says some shit like I feel like Ali, I'm the greatest of all time, floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. Yeah, I know this ain't boxing, but they that's still the pedigree. But as for you, you have no appeal. How you gonna record deal? Like, love that song. That's a song I wish a lot of more I wish a lot more Big Daddy Kane fans would know about that song, but you know they they avoid everything post um his first two albums and shit. And speaking of the track masters, this is actually one of the songs that got their mainstream appeal too, so yeah. Very dope song, How You Get a Record Deal. Um, track number three, Chocolate City. This is a posse cut between Mr. C, the Lover Brothers, and Lil Daddy Shane. Um, pretty dope posse cut again. It's very evident Big Daddy King walked out with this one and shit like that. Track number four, Prelude, just um, leading up to the next song, which is The Beef Is On. Um, with The Beef Is On, he basically is talking about, like, hood beefs and shit like that, and how you handle hood beefs and shit. Very grimy song and shit. Um, track number, next song, Stop Shaming. Um, 
This is like one of those songs where he's kind of going for like a more political method with it. Um, the first verse, he's talking about, you know, how we should like grow up and stuff like that. Um, and then the next verse, he's talking about how black people, when they become celebrities, they lose their identities and shit like that. Uh, which is very evident today. Like, look at what's going on with Kanye West. And the third verse, he's talking about how money can corrupt somebody and shit like that. Um, very dope song. And he's basically saying, stop shaming and shit like that. Stop shaming yourselves. And then you have Brother Man, Brother Man, which is, um, featuring Little Daddy Shane. Um, sequel to the Brother Brother song from the Prince of Darkness. Not as good as the Prince of Darkness cut, but still very dope too. Um, Lil Daddy Shane did his thing on this one. Um, track number eight, Rest in Peace. Pretty dope song. Like, it just features King just ripping the track and shit. Um, he starts off the song basically with him doing like a eulogy. He's like doing the same some shit like Dearly Beloved. We gather here today. And he's saying, um, please join us in mourning of the U-47, which was um, the microphone he was recording the song with. And after that, he just goes crazy on the mic. Like, Kane just rips this fucking song to shreds, in my opinion. Like, he says some shit like, I, I murdered plenty rappers and believe that I murdered more. So if you ask to give the cane a go, you better treat like drugs and just say no. Like, come on. Um, with, with zest and just blessed, best yet to progress. King Asiatic, no other rapper stands this. You couldn't be a king if you played huck, if you played hockey in Los Angeles. I guess P, P Day, top Dread Day, gotta admit A, like. And Easy Mo B did his thing on that beat, though. Fucking dope song. And then it leads to Very Special. This song features Spinderella. Yes, um, the same Spinderella that was the DJ for Salt and Pepper. Um, this song was okay. They better be lucky I'll actually like the cover of this, the Devil Laws original. So, if it was just some, any other cover, I would have been like giving it this, the Barry White vibes. But, it's still a decent song. I'll give it that. And then you have Here Comes Kane, Scoob and Scrap. Featuring Scoob Love and Scrap Lover. Easy Mo B, again, produced the beat. Um, That's a very cool song right there. Another dope pasta cut. Then you have Niggas Never Learn. Um, Large Professor did the beat for that. Um, that's a cool song right there. Self explanatory, just talking about niggas, hard headed niggas and shit like that. Um, then you have Give It To Me. Very interesting song, Give It To Me, because by the looks of it, you might think it's actually a sex song, which it is technically, but. The second verse, it actually gets like more praise because, because of the fact that Excuse me, my shit. Sorry about that. It was my mom. It was some important shit I had to actually reply about. I'm so sorry about that. But yeah, um, give it to me. 
was um a song where in that second verse he's finally addressing the AIDS rumor that kind of put had an effect on his career and so he's he has some line let me read you some lines from that he says some shit like Um, I pay the cost to be the boss, like, like with that HIV woman they tried to toss, but I'm so good with women that if I ever caught AIDS, a woman's doctor find a cure just so she can get laid. Clever line. So never fear my dear, just come on over here, and practice safe sex with girls I lay next to. In other words, the J hats on the head, cause I'm too sexy with AIDS, like right said Fred. Like, and that was a very bold statement and shit like that. Very bold, especially in the early 90s, and a very bold statement, because I believe that was one of the first statements where it addressed AIDS in general, like one of the first hip-hop songs in general, so that song right there, very bold song, um, then you have the Enough Respect remix, which is pretty much the same as the original, but harder, the beat's more harder, and then you have finale and shit where again a nice way to end off the album oh by the way um he, the original enough respect was produced by hank shockley and gary g riz who were public enemy affiliated producers and shit stay tuned i would mention more of them when i review apocalypse 91 so stay tuned on that and so that's all the songs off looks like a job for my verdict on this album, very, very, very dope album. Um, it's not a classic album, but it's a very solid album and shit like that. This album definitely has that New York feel and I feel like Kane adapted well and shit with like the productions by Trackmasters and Large Professor. Then you have Cool V doing this thing too. Um, he was not playing no games with this album. He definitely was not playing no games. Like, he was like, fuck all this shit from Taste of Chocolate. Fuck all, excuse me. Fuck all this shit from Prince of Darkness. This is me. I'm going back to my roots. I'm going back to my battle roots and shit like that. Um, very dope album. Love this album. I have actually a new appreciation for this album and stuff like that. Um, because this, he, uh, he really worked hard with this album and, and shit like that. Like, I'm, I may bag on Kane, but it's all for entertainment and shit on my channel. Like, I bag on hella artists and shit on my channel, so, yeah. But, again, this album, what more can I say? It's, I highly recommend this album, especially if you're a Big Daddy Kane fan. And if you're a fan of early 90s hip hop, because, I know, like, a lot of people, I know a lot of people are kind of, especially this generation, are, in, in, are indifferent about 80s hip-hop and shit like that, so they might not really appreciate Kane, especially Long Live the Kane and It's a Big Daddy Thing, which I understand, but if you really love Kane, of course I want you to check those albums out, but if you love 90s hip-hop and you love Big Daddy Kane, then listen to this album first and shit. I would recommend this album first. And yeah, this album is out of print. So if you can find this album, you must have in your collection. So yeah, that's Big Daddy King looks like a job for. And that's um Big Biz Marquis going off. Thank you so much for watching this, these reviews and shit. I'm finally getting ca ca caught up with a lot of my reviews now and shit and videos. So I'll probably do a, a review, one of you probably Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not too sure which of you yet, so stay tuned on that. So other than that, stay tuned. Peace. And by the way, you guys, like I mentioned before, submit some questions because um, around mid-October, I'm potentially going to do a live Q Q and a and discussion for my five-year anniversary. So submit some questions in the comments. Do your thing and shit like that. So yeah, peace. Hit that subscribe and like button and shit.